He played shooting guard, but he came into the league as one of the first tall guards with point guard abilities, on the heels of the unexpected Magic Johnson retirement, as he was 6'7 with above average ball handling and passing skills, and wasn't afraid to get flashy with the no-look pass. Although everyone knew there would never be another Magic Johnson, it was hard not to make the comparisons, as just like Magic, Steve Smith was a Michigan native who starred at Magic's alma mater with the Spartans. He left Michigan State as their all-time leading scorer and came into the league as a player possessing a unique package, which included one thing that Magic didn't have, and that was a great shooting touch. And as defenses would find out for years to come, if Steve Smith got going, you were in trouble. He formed a young core with the Miami Heat, but would deal with injuries most of his time there, before being traded to Atlanta, where he would play his best basketball as the team's main scoring option in the post-Dominique era. But as good as these Hawks teams were, they couldn't find postseason success, even though Smith seemed to always show up in the postseason. He spent a couple years in Portland with one heartbreaking ending before finally getting his ever-elusive title in San Antonio. He would bounce around a few more teams the next couple years before retiring after 14 seasons. And even though Steve Smith was tough and brash on the court, never backing down to anybody, he was the complete opposite off the court, as he was polite and selfless when he wasn't lighting you up for 30. So today we're going to look at one of the many shooting guards of the 90s that were stuck under the larger than life shadow that Michael Jordan cast, in the man they called Smitty, Steve Smith. Let's jog your memory. Steve Smith began his career as a star at Pershing High School in Detroit, Michigan, where he would average 26 points, 12 rebounds, and 10 assists as a senior, yet somehow he went unnoticed by Michigan and Michigan State scouts. Luckily for Smith, MSU head coach Judd Heathcote would stumble across him while he was scouting a different player. But Smith didn't help himself gain exposure or notoriety, as he didn't attend any camps or play AAU ball. And being that he entered high school at 5 foot 8, 150 pounds, until a growth spurt brought him to 6'5 by his junior year, it makes sense that he wasn't on anyone's radar. So Steve Smith would enter his freshman year of college as a starter for Heathcote and the Michigan State Spartans. The Spartans were coming off an 11 and 17 season and had just lost their two best scores to graduation. So expectations weren't very high in Smith's first year and it wasn't a great year for Michigan State as they finished 10 and 18, including five and 13 in conference play and obviously missed the tournament. Smith would have a solid freshman year starting in 26 of the 28 games and finishing second on the team in assists and steals per game, and third in scoring. He would also shoot over 1-3 per game at nearly 47%, and for Smith's freshman season, he would put up averages of about 10.5 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. Smith took a big leap in year 2 and would become the Spartans' star player, while improving his scoring by 7 points per game. He would be the team's leading scorer and rebounder, while finishing second in assists and steals. He was now taking almost 2 threes per game, but his efficiency did drop, as he hit them at just under 35%. Smith's improved play would help the Spartans to a much improved 18-10 record. However, they were still just 6-12 in conference play. They would get an invite to the NIT, but after losing to St. Louis in the semifinal, they would lose again to UAB in the third place game. But the Spartans seemed to be making strides in the right direction. And for Smith's sophomore season, he finished with averages of about 17.5 points, 7 rebounds, and three and a half assists per game. Smith's junior season was the most successful of his college career. The Spartans had a great starting lineup as it included seniors Kirk Manns and Ken Redfield, as well as sophomore forward Matt Stangenga, who were all averaging double figures. But what won the Spartans games is that they had a defense that was ranked 52nd in the nation out of 292. Smith continued to improve, leaving the team in points, rebounds, and assists per game while shooting over 52% from the field and nearly 46% from three, en route to a first team all Big Ten selection. The Spartans kicked off the year by winning the Great Alaska Shootout and would finish their regular season on a 10 game win streak to finish 26 8 overall and 15 3 in conference play, which would secure them the Big Ten Championship. Michigan State was ranked number three in the nation and received an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament as a one seed. They would narrowly defeat 16 seed Murray State in round one as Popeye Jones would put up 37 points and 11 rebounds. But Smith would pace the Spartans with 22 points and 11 rebounds on 8 of 11 from the field in a 4-point Spartans win. Round 2 was another 4-point win versus UC Santa Barbara, where Smith was the only player on the team to score more than 8 points, 
as he had 21 on about 46% shooting. The Sweet 16 would pit Michigan State versus Georgia Tech and their Lethal Weapon 3 trio of Kenny Anderson, Dennis Scott, and Brian Oliver. Anderson and Smith had a memorable duel that would see Smith lead all scores with 32 on over 59% from the field, but Anderson nearly matched him with 31 of his own. However, this game went to overtime on a controversial shot from Anderson, as it appeared quite obvious that he didn't get the game-tying shot off in time, but it was ruled a basket and Michigan State would lose by one in overtime, ending their season. But for his junior season, Smith would average about 20 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. Smith would have his best individual season as a senior, but the team would regress after the loss of Manns and Redfield. Smith led the team in scoring by far, as he nearly doubled the average of the next closest player in Stangenga, who was also the only other player to average double figures. Smith would also finish second on the team in assists and rebounds while shooting just over 47% from the field and close to 41% from three, as he averaged a career high 2.2 makes per game. The Spartans had an even better defense, ranking in the top 40, but their offense had dropped from 123rd to 227th in the nation, leading to an 18 and 10 record entering the tournament, as they would receive an at-large bid and be a five seed going into the first round matchup with the 12 seeded Wisconsin Green Bay. In a game that was closer than most expected, Michigan State would win by just two points after Smith hit a game winner as time expired to give the Spartans the 60 to 58 victory with Smith scoring a game high 19 points. Smith would play great in round two, scoring a team high 28 on close to 48% shooting in a double overtime thriller versus Utah, which unfortunately would end in a one point loss for Michigan State, ending their season and Smith's college career. But for his final season, Smith averaged about 25 points, 6 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game while earning his second straight first team All Big Ten as well as being a consensus second team All-American. Smith entered the NBA draft with a unique combination of size, ball handling, and passing ability which drew some comparisons to another Michigan State guard from over a decade earlier. And even though Smith would never reach the status of Magic Johnson, the similarities in skill set along with a great shooting touch made him a very intriguing prospect, who the fourth year Miami Heat decided to select with the fifth pick of the 1991 NBA Draft. Smith joined a Heat team that had finished 24 and 58 the year prior, but now boasted a young trio of himself, third year forward Glenn Rice, and fourth year center Ronnie Cycli. The team starting point guard Sherman Douglas was in the middle of a contract dispute when Smith joined the team and would opt to sit out to begin the season, which gave Smith an opportunity to start and to play point guard quite often, which allowed him to showcase his unique skill set and be a matchup nightmare for opposing point guards as he could bully them down low but also see over them to make it easier for him to facilitate and distribute. Smith would miss about three weeks this year with torn cartilage in his right knee, managing just 61 games for the season. And right as he went down with injury, Douglas rejoined the team to fill in for him. But after just five underwhelming games, Douglas would be traded for Brian Shaw, who was a 6'6 point guard which allowed the Heat to roll out a very big but very capable backcourt once Smith returned. Prior to the Douglas trade, the Heat had gotten off to their best start in franchise history at 14 and 16, and would end up finishing the year at 38 and 44 under first year coach Kevin Loggery. Smith would finish fourth on the team in scoring and first in assists, while also being a long range threat alongside Rice. Although they had a losing record, a tiebreaker with the Hawks would secure them their first playoff appearance in franchise history against the top-seeded defending champion Chicago Bulls, led by Michael Jordan. Chicago would blow out Miami in the first two games before ending it in a three-game sweep. However, the Heat would put up a fight in Game 3, losing by just five points. Smith would earn a lot of respect this series as he didn't back down from Jordan and raised his scoring average by four points from the regular season on nearly 53% from the field and over 63% from three. While averaging a team-high five assists per game, along with only committing three turnovers across the whole series. And Smith's rookie season would end with him averaging about 12 points, three rebounds, and four and a half assists per game, while being named first team all-rookie. In October, prior to the 93 season, Smith would have his second arthroscopic knee surgery in the past 10 months to address his knee issues from the year prior. The prognosis was for Smith to miss the first few weeks of the year, but then come back 100%. Unfortunately, recovery would have some setbacks for Smith and he would end up sitting out the first 34 games of the year, with the Heat going 10-24 in those games. 
However, when Smith did return on January 20th, his points, rebounds, and assist averages were all higher than the year before, while shooting over 40% from three. Smith had become a top three scorer on the team in his shortened season, behind Rice and Cycli, and also led the team in assists with a career-high 5.6 per game, which included four games with at least 10 assists. With Smith's return, the Heat went 26-11 the rest of the year to finish 36-46. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to earn them their second straight playoff appearance, as Smith's second season would end with averages of about 16 points, 4 rebounds, and 5.5 and assists per game. Smith would finally have a healthy year in 94 and would continue to improve, as he averaged a career high in rebounds and steals per game, with 4.5 and 1.1 respectively, and would once again lead the team in assists per game, averaging over 5 for the second and final time of his career which included a career-high 15 assists in a January 23rd blowout of Washington. Smith would also up his scoring average again, as he finished second on the team in scoring behind only Rice. Even with the 7th ranked offense and 11th ranked defense in the league, the Heat hovered around 500 all year, ultimately finishing with a 42-40 record, the first winning record in franchise history. The Heat would face a new look Hawks team in the first round of the playoffs, led by Danny Manning and would split the first four games before losing in Game 5 to lose the series. Smith had to step up this series as Rice really struggled, and Cycli wasn't playing at 100% as he came off the bench for two of the five games. But Smith would be the top scorer in the series at over 19 a game, and even though he shot just over 41% from the field, he also shot over 40% from three. However, he would start the series much hotter than he finished it, as he scored at least 22 in the first three games, which led to a 2-1 series lead for Miami, but would average just 12.5 points on 7 of 26 shooting across games 4 and 5. And Smith's third season came to an end, with him averaging about 17.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. Smith would also suit up for Dream Team 2 and win the gold medal in the FIBA World Championships over the summer. The dominoes were falling to begin the 95 season as Cycli was traded to Golden State for Billy Owens right before the start of the year. But Smith did begin the year as a member of the Heat, and would be averaging over 20 points after two games. But then he, along with Grant Long and a second round pick, would be traded to the Atlanta Hawks for Kevin Willis on November 7th, 1994. The Hawks had lost Danny Manning to free agency, but now had replaced one Bristol player with another in the acquisition of Smith, as he would play 78 games, starting 59 of them and form an effective backcourt with Mookie Blaylock, as the two combined for over 33 points per game. However, they would each shoot below 43% from the field. The Hawks under Lenny Wilkins weren't a great offensive team, as they would finish in the bottom five in the league, but they would make up for this with a top three defense, which resulted in a 42-40 record and a playoff matchup versus the Indiana Pacers. Unfortunately for the Hawks, the Pacers were a much more complete team, and it didn't help that Reggie Miller averaged nearly 32 points in a three-game Pacers sweep. Smith would find himself leading his new team in scoring for the series as he put up 19 points and two steals per game, which included a 27-point game two. However, he shot below 40% for the series, and second-leading scorer Blaylock didn't even crack 37% from the field. So the New Look Hawks season ended abruptly, but for his overall regular season, Smith averaged about 16.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. Smith came back for the 96th season, playing more like he did when he left Miami. For the first time in his career, he would lead his team in scoring, and do so on a then-career-high single-season average of 18.1 points per game. The Hawks had gotten off to a 28-23 start, but saw an opportunity to acquire a good young player and acted on it, when they sent Andrew Lang and Spud Webb to Minnesota for Sean Rooks and Christian Leitner. The Wolves had acquired Tom Gugliotta the season prior and then picked up Kevin Garnett in the draft, so the forward position was set in Minnesota and Leitner was the odd man out. Leitner slotted in as the team's third leading scorer behind Smith and Blaylock and the Hawks went 18-13 the rest of the way, as their 46-36 record was enough to earn them another playoff berth. The Hawks got a rematch with the Pacers in round one but were ready this time, especially Smith who scored at least 25 points in each of the first three games. And even though he would cool down a bit in the final two games, the Hawks would still win the series in five, behind nearly 23 points from Smith on over 51% from the field and 60% from deep. Round two brought the powerhouse Magic led by Shaq and Penny, who proved to be too much for the Hawks, as Atlanta was sent home in five games. 
Shaq and Penny dominated the series, but Smith paced the Hawks with about 20 and a half points, but was nowhere near as efficient, as he managed less than 38% from the field and less than 28% from three. He would score in double figures every game of the series, but shoot over 43% in only one game. However, he did set some postseason career highs with nine assists in game one, and then 35 points with seven made threes in game four. But as long as big men like Shaq and Patrick Ewing were roaming the East, the Hawks were gonna have trouble competing going forward. And Smith's season saw him average about 18 points, four rebounds, and three assists per game. The Hawks made one of the biggest moves of the offseason when they signed free agent big man and former defensive player of the year Dikembe Mutombo to a five-year contract. So now the Hawks had a well-balanced starting lineup consisting of Smith, Mutombo, Blaylock, Leitner, and Tyrone Corbin, with Smith being the best player on the offensive side and Mutombo anchoring the defense. Smith would once again raise his scoring average as he led the team and became a 20-point-per-game scorer for the first time in his career. The Hawks would start just 16-11, and 11, but then go on a 10-game win streak in January and eventually end the season at 56-26 and 26, with the fourth-ranked defense in the league, anchored by Matumbo, who won his second Defensive Player of the Year award. Smith would have a good all-around season, as on top of being the team's top scorer, he was second in assists per game. This season would include him dropping a career-high 41 points in a January 30th loss to Utah, as well as a career-high 9 three-pointers in a March 14th loss to Seattle and finally a career-high 5 steals in an April 9th win versus Philly. The Hawks would play the Pistons, led by superstar Grant Hill, in the first round in a back-and-forth series which eventually saw the Hawks take it in 5 games. The Hawks won with a balanced scoring attack, with all 5 starters averaging at least 12 a game, with Smith leading the way at just over 20 a game on nearly 48% shooting. Round 2 would be a matchup with Jordan and the defending champion Bulls, and after splitting the first 2 games, the Bulls won the next three to take the series. Smith struggled against the Bulls' elite perimeter defense as he dropped a second on the team in scoring with over two and a half fewer points than round one, while shooting less than 32% from the field. But Smith's second season would end with him averaging about 20 points, three and a half rebounds, and four assists per game. 1998 would be Smith's best season as a pro. Matumbo would win another Defensive Player of the Year and the Hawks would roll out the same lineup for the most part, except Leitner would average the lowest point total of his career up to that point and lose his starting spot to third-year forward Allen Henderson later in the year. Additionally, after averaging at least 15 points each season that Smith had been in Atlanta, Blaylock only averaged 13 points on less than 40% shooting, so although the offense looked the same, they weren't playing the same. But this didn't seem to matter to start the year, as the Hawks began the season 11-0, but couldn't sustain it as they would be 29-20 and 20 at the All-Star break. An All-Star break that was important to Smith, as he had received the first and only All-Star selection of his career and would score 14 points off the bench for the East. And this All-Star selection was deserved, as Smith would again end up leading the team with over 20 points per game and putting up at least 4 rebounds and 4 assists per game for the first time since his time in Miami, as well as shooting his best field goal percentage and 3-point percentage since his time in Miami. After the All-Star break, the Hawks would go 21-12 the rest of the way to finish the year 50-32, as they would face off against the Hornets in the first round, led by Smith's former teammate Glenn Rice. The Hornets would win the first two games, but then get embarrassed by Atlanta in Game 3, as the Hawks held them to 64 points to secure a 32-point win. Unfortunately, the Hornets would rebound and close out the series in Game 4. The Hawks didn't play a bad series, but they just didn't get the scoring they needed as their Game 3 win was the only game they scored more than 87 points. Smith led the way with arguably the best postseason series of his career, as he averaged nearly 25 points on over 57% from the field and 50% from three. But it wouldn't be enough, as Blaylock and Henderson were the only other players in double figures, with neither of them cracking 15 points. So another successful Hawks season ended earlier than expected, with Smith averaging about 20 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. He would also be honored this year as a community activist when he received the Walter Kennedy Citizenship Award. 99 was a lockout year, and injuries would cause Smith to miss 14 of the 50 regular season games. Leitner had torn his Achilles in September, and after he was re-signed by the Hawks in January, he would be shipped to Detroit for Scott Pollard and a first round pick. Aside from the loss of Leitner, the Hawks starters looked virtually the same, but they were aging, as Blaylock was 31 and Matumbo was 32 and Smith, at 29 years old, was the team's top scorer for the fourth straight season. 
but was no longer averaging 20 per game and would shoot barely over 40% this season. The Hawks would roll out the league's second worst offense, but would offset this with the top defense to finish 31 and 19 and make the playoffs as they earned a matchup with the Pistons. The series went five games with the home team winning each game. And with the Hawks having home court advantage, they would advance to the second round. As was the norm for his time in Atlanta, Smith was the team's top scorer. This time at about 18 points per game on 43% from the field and 33% from three. The Hawks were confident entering the second round as they were facing an eight seeded Knicks team with a hobbled Patrick Ewing. But in a shock to many, the Hawks were swept by the Knicks. Atlanta completely crumbled with all five starters shooting below 39%. And even though Smith led the team in scoring at about 16 per game, he did so on 27% from the field and 20% from three, which included going two for 16 in game two and five for 20 in game four. And the Hawks season would end with Smith putting up averages of about 18 and a half points, four rebounds and three and a half assists per game. The offseason would involve a lot of trade talks surrounding Smith, which would finally become a reality on August 2nd, when he headlined a deal to Portland with the Hawks receiving Isaiah Ryder and Jim Jackson in return. Smith joined an already stacked Blazers team coming off a Western Conference Finals appearance and would be one of a few great veteran acquisitions alongside guys like Scottie Pippen and Detlef Schrempf. Smith would be part of a starting lineup where everyone averaged double figures with Smith's 15 points being good for second on the team, behind Rashid Wallace. Smith fit in nicely as the Blazers were also a more defensive-oriented team, and as Smith was no longer pressured to be the main scorer, he turned in the most efficient season of his career, shooting a career-high 46.7% from the field and nearly cracking 40% from three, while playing all 82 games. The Blazers would cruise to a 59-23 record, which was good for the three seed in the West. And the first round would be a very close series versus Minnesota, as no game was decided by more than 8 points. But the Blazers would win in 4 games, led by Scottie Pippen. But Smith would be close behind, at over 16 points, on 46% from the field, and 50% from 3. The second round would be another gentleman's sweep for Portland, this time against the Utah Jazz, as Smith would lead the team in scoring, with about 16 points per game on an even more efficient 56.4% from the field and 50% from three. And then the Blazers were back in the Western Conference Finals as they planned, this time against Shaq, Kobe, and the LA Lakers. But the Blazers would dig themselves a deep hole, going down 3-1, but would come back to win the next two and even the series at three, going into Game 7. And the Blazers were dominating the first three quarters of Game 7, as they were up by 15 as the third quarter came to an end. In a series that was capping off an incredible postseason from Smith, as he upped his scoring to over 18 a game on nearly 47% from the field and 60% from three during the conference finals. But then disaster struck, as no one on the Blazers could buy a bucket in the fourth quarter and their lead dwindled. And this fourth quarter included some questionable calls, but none more questionable than a no call on a layup attempt by Smith that looked like a blatant foul on Shaq that could have brought the Blazers to within two with under 30 seconds to play and this would spell the end for Portland, as time ran out with them on the losing side, ending their finals hopes. But for the regular season, Smith would put up about 15 points, 4 rebounds, and 2.5 and assists per game. Smith would end up winning something this summer, when he competed with the gold medal winning US national team in the Sydney Summer Olympics, averaging about 6 points and shooting over 44% from 3. The Blazers would run it back for 0-1, but age and injuries were catching up to them, as all three of their acquisitions from the previous year had lesser roles, with Schremp originally retiring after the season, but coming out of retirement when Pippen went down with an injury. And although Smith played in 81 games, he took on more of a sixth man role most of the year, but would put up similar averages as his minutes didn't change too much. And he would again finish second in scoring behind Wallace. The Blazers would still have a good year, as they finished 50 and 32, and they'd get a chance for revenge, as they would face the Lakers in the first round of the playoffs. But no one was stopping the 0-1 Lakers, and the Blazers were swept quite handily. Smith continued his solid postseason play as a Blazer though, as he finished second on the team in scoring, while shooting over 47% in a starting role that he had reassumed near the end of the regular season. And for the regular season, Smith would average about 13.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and two and a half assists per game. Smith would be traded to the Spurs in the offseason for Derek Anderson and Steve Kerr, where he would get another chance at a title, as he would be the starting shooting guard on the Spurs, led by their twin towers of Tim Duncan and David Robinson. 
Smith would average 11.6 points per game, which was a career low up to that point, but also the last season he would average double figures. But Smith would also set a career high by shooting 47.2% from three, which was also tops in the league. And this season would cap off three straight years, shooting over 45% from the field. The Spurs, led by MVP Tim Duncan, went 58 and 24, and would get the Sonics in the first round, who would push them to five games, before the Spurs ended the series with a game five blowout. However, Robinson would only play seven minutes in game one, before sitting out the rest of the series with a back injury. Smith didn't have the same playoff performance that he was having in Portland, as he was able to put up 13 points per game, but did so on just over 40% from the field and less than 24% from three. Round two is a familiar foe, as the Spurs would face the Lakers, but would lose in five games, as Robinson was only able to play in three, and was mostly a non-factor in those games due to his back. Smith, however, continued to struggle, as his scoring dropped to less than eight points per game, and he would only shoot 30% from the field and under 30% from three. As Smith's season ended at the hands of the Lakers for the third consecutive year, but his regular season saw him average about 11.5 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 2 assists per game, while also being honored with the NBA's Sportsmanship Award. Smith would deal with injuries in 03 as he managed just 58 games, starting only 19 of them as his role was sacrificed for young up-and-comers like Tony Parker, Steven Jackson, and a rookie Manu Ginobili. Smith would shoot below 40% for the first time in his career, but was also getting a lot less shots. The Spurs were elite as their back-to-back -back MVP in Tim Duncan led them to the top seed in the West, as they would beat Phoenix, then the Lakers, then Dallas, each in six games to earn a finals matchup with the Nets, who they would also beat in six games, to give Smith his first and only title of his career. But Smith wouldn't play much of a role in these playoffs, as he got about seven minutes per game in nine out of 24 games, averaging just under two points. But all that mattered was that he could now call himself a champion, and for the regular season, he averaged about 7 points, 2 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game. Smith would sign with New Orleans prior to the 04 season and would appear in 71 games while shooting over 40% from 3 for a 41-41 Hornets team led by Baron Davis, who would make the playoffs but lose to Miami in a tough 7-game series. Smith would finish the season on a high note as he would score a game-high 25 points on 9-14 of 14 shooting, including 5 threes in the Game 7 loss and his regular season would see him average about 5 points, 1 rebound, and 1 assist per game. Smith would sign with the expansion Charlotte Bobcats for the 05 season, where he would play 37 games for the team, and be credited with hitting the first 3-pointer in franchise history, but then he would be traded back to where it all began on February 25th, when he was acquired by Miami. He wouldn't see a lot of action the rest of the way, as he appeared in just 13 regular season games for the Heat. And that remained the trend as he would appear in just 3 out of 15 games during Miami's postseason run to the Eastern Conference Finals. It would ultimately end in a Game 7 loss to Detroit. And for the regular season, he would average about 6.5 points, 1.5 rebounds, and 1 assist per game. And Smith would announce his retirement after the season, ending a very consistent 14-year career that can easily be overlooked as he spent so many years on organizations that knew how to play as a team and had success by making sure every player played their role. And that meant that Smith wasn't expected to will his team to wins night in and night out with incredible scoring performances. He was expected to get his points as they came to him and play with the ultimate goal of winning games, which is exactly what he did as a true sportsman in the league. He had some gut-wrenching losses both during his college and pro days, but he didn't whine or complain. He just came back ready to do whatever was needed from him and was lucky enough to eventually get a championship out of it. And even though he wasn't a player known for his individual accolades, or NBA superstardom, his game was unique and he was still immortalized through him being the unofficial originator of the fake spin move that bears his nickname sake. They would even be voted one of the top moves in the league by Sports Illustrated, mentioned in the same breath as the killer crossover and the dream shake. But that's it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe for plenty more videos like this one. If you liked it, check out this one on his Miami teammate or this one on his late career teammate in New Orleans. Thanks for watching and see you next time.